today as we come to the table. He was the one he talked into working another six years because God was blessing Laban's family and now suddenly things have changed. Why? Well, because again, not only of Laban's wicked heart, but note this, a countenance change and or change of situation was taking place because God wanted to move in a new way in Jacob's life. Note that. Now, why do I make such a point of that? Because it is oftentimes in our life where whether it is a countenance change through a boss or family member or whether it's a change of situation in our life, it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes God is using it to push us out of the nest. Have you ever found yourself enjoying life and living comfortably when suddenly everything starts to feel like it's crumbling below you? It's a scary feeling to suddenly not have that security we once did. But what if I told you that sometimes the only way God is able to work in our lives is by bringing change to them? Well, thanks for staying with us today as we come to the table, the daily Bible study program of Pastor Mark Kirk of Calvary Knoxville. Today, Pastor Mark is going to be sharing a message with us where he talks about the uncomfortable times in life. This can mean job changes, sudden loss of a loved one, financial changes, and so many other things. The truth is, when we feel most uncomfortable, we cling to God and find Him the most. Now, let's join Pastor Mark in the book of Genesis chapter 31 with today's edition of Come to the Table. Genesis chapter 31. As we look today at seasons of change, again, we're going to be covering all of chapter 31 today as we see this portion of Jacob's life where God is about to move him on. Why don't we pray and ask for God's blessing as we get into his word? Let's pray. God, I do thank you for your faithfulness to us and your faithfulness to feed us and teach us. And I do ask God that you would just now teach us your word and speak to us, Lord, encourage us and strengthen us. And God, as we look at seasons of change, Lord, there are many of us in this room right now that are in seasons of change ourselves. All of us are in some season in our walk with you. But Lord, some of us are in very difficult seasons today. And I pray that you would use this portion of scripture to be an encouragement. God, even as Jacob was in a difficult season and is now about to pass into a season of expectation, a season of excitement, a season of change and new things that you had planned for his life. Lord, I pray that you would encourage us and those of us that are here today that are in maybe a tough moment in our walk with you, that you do have plans for us, a hope and a future. And Lord, you do have a season of change for us that is going to be something that's going to be filled with joy and filled with hope. And so strengthen this, God, by your word and encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, even as there are regular seasons in nature, something that I've learned in the Christian faith, and you've heard me say this before, is there are seasons in our walk. You know, when we first come to the Lord, we enter into a season of springtime. You know, this everything's new, everything's alive. I remember, you know, for the first time, they say, wake up and smell the coffee. Literally, it seemed like coffee had a new smell to it, and I still can't seem to get away from that new smell. But the bottom line is I, I began to enjoy things I'd never enjoyed before. Things were exciting. Life was vibrant and alive. I'd gone from darkness to light, truly. And I think sometimes the darker things are, the greater the light appears. I don't think that. I know that, as a matter of fact. And because I came from such a place of darkness, the light was that much brighter. Many of you have similar testimonies. But the bottom line is we enter into that season of springtime. But then after the springtime, we settle kind of into this now just enjoying the blessings of the Lord and realizing how good our God really is. And that kind of is a, a summer season. You know, things have already bloomed out and are full, and now we're just kind of enjoying it. But then there seems to come a time in the Christian walk where a little farther down the road, things begin to seem to slow down some. Things begin to not be quite as exciting. It seems as though maybe a little bit of the life is disappearing. Things may be beginning to die somewhat. Not really dead, but seeming like it's heading that direction. And we head into a time of the fall. 
when the leaves begin to die and fall off of the trees and, and suddenly that spring and that summer that we so enjoyed and we're so excited about, we enter into a time of, well, it's a time of rain. It's a time of, of wondering what's going on. Not totally dead, but Lord, where am I now in my walk with you? And where are we, Lord, you know? And then when that time has passed, we enter into probably the hardest time in the Christian faith, and that is the time of winter where everything seems so dead. The trees are bare, the flowers are not blooming, it's cold, it's hard, and it seems as though it's not going to pass. And, and that's the season that Jacob is coming out of. Jacob has been in a winter season in Haran for 20 years. Oh, he had his moments within that season of, of other springs and summers and all. And note this, when it comes to seasons in the Christian life, it's not like we only have four of them and then we die. So understand, it's, it's the seasons of Christians are just like the seasons we experience in nature. They run in cycles. When you finish winter, you'll move back into a springtime and then back into a summer and back into a fall and back into a winter. God seems to have this rotation of working in our life in a way that, that continues to change us and grow us and mature us. And it gives us hope because as we come out of the winter times, we know that there's a springtime around the corner. We need that. I know some of you probably get depressed during the winter time. My wife, she probably wouldn't uh, be upset with me sharing that. She doesn't get excessively depressed, but she gets down during the winter time. Just all the clouds and all, she's ready for it to be done. And boy, when the spring comes, I mean, she's like, you know, bouncing around again. It's just, and some of you are like that. You know, you just want to move into that. But in spirit, we're all like that. We want to move into that freshness. We want something that's, that's going to give us hope. And the Lord is faithful to give us that hope. And God is going to show in Jacob's life that Jacob has that hope. He doesn't yet see it. But he's moved through the different seasons over the 20 years in Haran, going from different springs and different summers and different falls and different winters to now leaving this winter time, heading into a new time of expectation, a new time of, of spring, so to speak, where God has new things for his life. And some of you are in that place. Right now, we're all in different seasons. I don't know what your season is, but we're all in different seasons right now. The bottom line is some of you are in that winter season and you're wondering, Lord, where are you? Why is it so hard? Why is everything so cold? Why does everything seem so dead? Why do I not seem to hear you as good as I used to? Why is it not as vibrant? Whatever the case might be. But understand that in that season, God is doing a work that can only be done in that type of season. It cannot be done in another season. It cannot be done in another way. It reminds me of Jesus when he was in the garden. He said, Lord, if there be any other way, let this cup pass from me. And the father said, there is no other way. You have to go to the cross if you're gonna die for the sins of mankind. Well, we're not dying for the sins of mankind. Our job is much less. We're simply walking with the Lord and his witnesses and testimony. But the bottom line is there are certain things that God cannot do unless he puts you in a season of winter or whatever season that he needs. Now, if you're like me, you enjoy the spring and summer. That's the one I like. I like those seasons. And the beginning of fall is not too bad because the color change and there's a little bit of something and the feel in the air, the Christmas, there's an excitement to that. But even that begins to get old as the rain continues to fall and then you head into winter. And again, I want this, I hope that today is an encouragement to you if you're in that season right now, you're turning those corners of those seasons because that's exactly where Jacob is. And God has something very special planned for Jacob, a new life in a new place. And it doesn't mean when God moves you to a new season that he's going to move you from Knoxville somewhere else. That's not my point. Most people stay in the same place their whole life. The point I'm making is, is God is moving you in spirit from season to season, from growth to growth, from glory to glory. And that's how the Bible describes the Christian faith. And, and the, the, the good news is, is that the next time you go through a winter, you're going to handle it better than the first time you did. And each time we go through this season changes, we handle it better because we're more mature and we understand more. And we say, all right, Lord, I'm simply going to trust you. I'm going to batten down the hatches. You know, we're going to seal all the cracks around the windows. We're going to build a fire in the word of God and in prayer and just wait on the season to pass. And God will be faithful to keep us warm and to minister to us in spirit during that time. And then there's going to come a day when although it may seem like it's not going to happen, suddenly the snow will begin to melt and the flowers are going to pop up through the ground again. And it's time to go out and once again say, all right, Lord, what What's for this season of my life? That's where Jacob is today. Jacob is about to enter into a brand new season. And remember where we left off last time. Now, what has happened was, again, God was blessing him. Laban was a scoundrel. Laban was changing his wages. We're going to see in this passage, he changed his wages some 10 times. It didn't matter what, you know, Jacob did. If, if God began to bless him in that area, then Laban said, well, then we're going to change it and make this your pay. You know, God began to bless him in that area. He says, well, then we're going to change it and make this your pay. But no matter what Laban did to him, God blessed him as he was faithful to walk with the Lord. And note that, Christian, 
whether it's the workplace or whether it's any avenue of life, if you are faithful to walk with the Lord and to stick with the Lord through all the different seasons of your Christian walk, God will be faithful to bless you. And note this, these blessings were coming even during a time of winter. Winter in the sense that we're going to see that he's going through all the troubles in his family, all the troubles with the, remember the competition they were having and all the jealousies? And now he's going to enter into new competition and jealousies with Laban's sons as they see God's blessing in his life. And yet in the midst of all this, God is blessing him. And we can take heart in that, that although the world may seem to treat us unfairly, God will make sure that we are taken care of. God is our sustainer. God is our protector. And God is our provider. And Jacob is learning this in a very graphic way as he walks through his life with the Lord. Well, again, we left off with him becoming more and more prosperous. Notice verse 43 at the end of chapter 30. Thus the man, that is Jacob, became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Well, again, that's great for Jacob, but for Laban's jealous sons and the jealousy in Laban himself, not so good. Notice verse 1. Now Jacob heard the words of Laban's sons saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. And from what was our father's, he has acquired all this wealth. Now they begin to falsely accuse him. They're saying he shouldn't have all these flocks. He shouldn't have all this success. It was from our dad's flocks he got it. It was our dad's sheep and our dad's goats that he got so blessed. That's true, but it was payment for the work that Jacob was doing. Jacob had done nothing wrong. Jacob was simply receiving the payment for what he had done. Laban agreed to give him the speckled and spotted and streaked animals, which were the less valuable and the more rare And so it wasn't a very good offer to begin with. God began to bless it. And now Laban's sons are jealous. And they're saying, hey, this would have been our inheritance. He's getting all this stuff, and it was ours. And again, this was the family inheritance. This was the family wealth, all the stocks, so to speak, all the animals. And so they're upset about it, but wrongfully so. And notice this, Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before. Two things, he hears that they are upset with him and the countenance has changed, and now he sees a countenance change in Laban's face. Now it's interesting, what does it mean by countenance? Well, the word countenance here means or speaks of someone's face reflecting what they feel towards you. Basically, their sentiments towards you. You know, you can oftentimes tell by the way that someone looks at you how they feel about you. And so Laban very obviously was making it very clear, I do not feel good about you, Jacob. And he saw his countenance has changed. Remember when he first came, oh, he was the jewel of the family. He was the one, again, that came from the wealthy family. He was the one that had to work for 14 years, basically for free for Laban. He was the one he talked into working another six years because God was blessing Laban's family. And now suddenly things have changed. Why? Well, because again, not only of Laban's wicked heart, but note this, a countenance change and or change of situation was taking place because God wanted to move in a new way in Jacob's life. Note that. Now, why do I make such a point of that? Because it is oftentimes in our life where whether it is a countenance change through a boss or family member or whether it's a change of situation in our life, it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes God is using it to push us out of the nest. I remember in Santa Fe when we were settled in, you know, we had a home there. We had our kids in a school there. We had a school at our church and it was thriving and things were going great. It was a wonderful place to be. We had all of our friends and family that we developed over all the years and God began to move us out. And it was through a change of situation. It wasn't just, oh, we think we'll go now. No, things began to change and they began to obviously change. And we realized God is changing the situation. God is moving us to a new season of our life and it's time to go. And so don't ever be fearful of those changes. Sometimes those changes are simply a redirection or a direction from the Lord. And so Jacob here now is experiencing this change and it's coming in the form of a countenance change here in Laban's face, which again is not the best way to have the change, but God is moving him on. God's hand is in it. And and note this, as we watch Jacob's life and everything that happens throughout his life and in this chapter, understand God is in every bit control of all situations. I think sometimes we think, you know what, Lord, what's going on and what's happening in this season of my life or what I'm going through? We need to understand as believers that God is controlling every aspect of our life. And if we understand that God is in control of every aspect of our life, then whatever comes our way, we're okay with it. It's like, all right, Lord, I may not understand it, but I believe you're in control. See, here's the thing we need to challenge ourselves with this morning. Do you believe that God's really in control of your daily life? Do you really believe that? 
Do you believe he's in control of how you're going to be directed this week and next month and next year? If you believe that, you have an understanding of what the scripture says because the Bible says God is in control and God is on the throne. We've got to always remember that and we've got to understand that for the believer, there is no such thing as chance. It doesn't exist. I know the phrase, good luck. I understand that phrase. But in reality, for the believer, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as luck in the believer's life. It is the divine hand of God in all things that we do and how God directs. Now, I'm not blaming God for the sinful things we do or the foolish choices that we make. That's our responsibility. But when we're walking with the Lord and seeking the Lord, God controls every day and every moment. And we need to understand they've been mapped out even before the foundation of the earth. The Bible clearly declares. So we can trust in that. Well, God is directing Jacob. And notice, then the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. I love this because, again, there's a couple things to note here. After God begins to change Jacob's situation, God now speaks to him and confirms that it's him. Now, why is that important to take note of? Well, because your situation might be changing and you might say, hey, God's doing this and so it's time for me to get out of this. I can get out of this job or I can leave this place. Wait a minute. It might be that God wants you to stay exactly where you are and let him work out things in your life that he wants to work out. You've heard the phrase before, bloom where you're planted. It might be that God wants you to stay put and he wants to prune and he wants to shape and he wants to work in your life. So don't think just because your situation changed, that means that you're supposed to make some sort of move. Then Mark, you just said we're supposed to look for changes. How do we know? Here's how we know. If the situation in your life is changing and then God speaks to you and confirms it, now you know it's the Lord. But if the situation in your life is changing and God doesn't speak to you or confirm that you're to move on, you're to stay right where you are because God is doing a work right there and God is molding and shaping. I've known people that have changed jobs. You know, they'll change their job every so many months or whatever. They can't seem to hold down a steady job. And oftentimes I hear, well, it's because of this or because of that or my boss or whatever it might be. And the bottom line it boils down to is that they're just not stable enough in their life to hold down a job. And God is trying to teach them to sit still and to learn to be stable, to bloom where you're planted, if you will. So that's a whole different situation. But whenever God begins to change circumstances and then speaks to us and says, this is me and it's time to go, now we know it's the Lord. And so that's the confirmation we're to wait on. Now God speaks to him and says, return to the land of your fathers and your family and I will be with you. And I notice this, I love this. Not only does he say return, he says, I will be with you. You know, if I know that God is with me, I can do anything. I'll go anywhere or do anything if I know that God is in it and God is with me. But if I don't know for sure the Lord is in this thing, I, I'm completely unstable and unsure about what I'm doing. And you're probably the same way. I remember Moses, when he was in the wilderness, he said, Lord, if you don't go with us, we don't want to go. Because God was saying, you're a wicked people. You're a rebellious people. And I can't dwell among you because of your rebelliousness. And Moses said, God, if you don't go with me, I don't want to go. And I remember that's the prayer that I prayed when we came out and left you know, Santa Fe. Lord, if you don't go with us, I don't want to go. And, and I know your heart's the same way. If God isn't with us, who would want to go? But here's the encouragement. If God is with us, we can do anything, can't we? And now Jacob hears, you know what? I've not only called you to do this, Jacob, I will be with you. That's the encouragement he needed. And that's the encouragement that we need whenever we feel we're following the Lord's direction. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to a field to his flock. Now again, he's about to reveal to them what God is doing in his heart. That God is moving in his heart to move on to something new. And so what does he do? He calls them out to the field. No doubt doing this for privacy. He didn't want anybody to hear that shouldn't be hearing. Maybe Laban or any of his sons and, and, and plus his children. Maybe he didn't want them to know until he consulted with Rachel and Leah about what he was going to do. But now we see that he comes out here and he begins to consult with them about what he's going to do. And, and by the way, take note of this, husbands. The Bible does say that God will lead through the man in the family. God will lead through the husband. But it's a wise husband who consults with his family about what should be done. And who goes to his wife and says, honey, here's what's in my heart. Let's pray about this. And basically he's going to present this to him and say, where are you on this? Where's your heart in this? And he gets some feedback. And I think that's a wise husband that does that. And notice he said to them, I see your father's countenance is not favorable toward me as before. But the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my might, I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me and has changed my wages 10 times. But God did not allow him to hurt me. 
If he said thus, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks more speckled. And if he said thus, the streaked shall be your wages, then all the flocks more streaked. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And it happened at that time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and I saw in a dream and behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked and speckled and gray spotted. And then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled and gray spotted for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. Take note of that. You ever think you're being treated unfairly and no one sees? God sees. And God is your defense. And God will be the one that takes up for you. He says, I see what your boss has done. I see what your family's done. I see what your friends have done. I see what anyone has done to you. I take note of it. I see it, though no one else does. I will be your defender. I will be the one that will take up for you. I will be the one that will bless you. And it's comforting to me to know that the Lord sees this and that God is in control. And we also see here that when he started doing all these things that he did and the whole breeding thing of the speckled and spotted, God had spoken to his heart. We didn't see that back in chapter 30, but in 31 we see now that God came to him in a dream and said, I'm gonna bless these animals. And the ones that you've agreed with, I'm gonna bless and I'm gonna make them multiply. So he had the encouragement from the Lord and he had the assurance of the Lord to let him know that he was in this thing and that he was gonna do it. Now, Again, I find it also interesting here that we'll see during Jacob's stay in Haran, he not only spent 20 years serving Laban, but notice he says Laban changed his wages here 10 times. Now, why is this interesting to me? 20 years in Haran, wages changed 10 times because God, as we said earlier, is in every detail of the believer's life. And what do I mean by that? Well, it's interesting that the number 10 in Scripture is the number of perfection of divine order. And the number 20 is the number of expectations. Now, what is my point in all that? My point is simply this, perfection of divine order in that God had now perfected what he wanted to do in Jacob's life in this particular season and expectations in what God was going to do in the season to come. And even as God has made those promises to Jacob, God makes those same promises to us. And that is this, God has a perfect and divine order for our life. He is structuring it. He is setting up the limits. He is setting up the timetable. And in the midst of that, God says, I also want you to know that if you're in the midst of a very hard time right now, then you can have an expectation of a season change. Blessing is on the way. It's interesting, when Jesus hung on the cross, when it was all done, he said, it is finished. And what I, what I note about that is, is that he had to go through the suffering. He had to go through the pain to do what it was the Father had called him to do. But just as soon as it was done, he was released. Not a moment too soon, not a moment too late. Jesus said, it is finished. And the Bible says, he released his spirit. The Lord himself, Jesus, released his spirit. And what is my point and encouragement in us for that? Listen, you may be in a time where you're saying, hey, I'm in a suffering season right now. I'm in a winter time. You know, how long is this going to last? Has God forgotten me? God sees. God hasn't forgotten. And just as soon as God is done doing what it is he needs to do, you will be released. Well, our time at the table of God's Word has come to a close for today. But what are some things you gained from what you heard? The book of Genesis gets the ball rolling, causing you to think about all kinds of big picture questions, things related to the creation of the world, why God would allow a worldwide flood, and why were the Israelites His chosen people. These are all good things to think about and to dig further in God's Word. But our hope, is that what you heard today has helped solidify some things that might have been in question before. God was specific in how he brought things about. None of it was accidental or haphazard. As you listen through this series, we trust that you'll come to some great realizations about who God is and what he's done and is doing. To listen to this message again or share with a friend, go to thewaymedia.net. Once again, that's thewaymedia.net. Simply click on the Come to the Table tab. If you have some questions about what you heard today, we'd love to pray for you or answer any questions you may have. So reach out to us through the questions and comments link on our website or call us at 865-609-1385. That's 865-609-1385. Please don't hesitate to reach out. 
we encourage you to stay grounded in God's Word, allowing Jesus to grow you and draw you closer to Him daily, being willing to go where He's guiding you. Pastor Mark has prepared another teaching here in the book of Genesis. So join us again the next time we come to the table. Come to the Table is a radio outreach ministry of Calvary Knoxville.